Well, as I, as you probably know, I'm known by Eddie, but my f full name is Edward Ernest Johnston. Johnston spelled N-S-T-O-N. I was born in 25th of July 1923, which of course makes me 99 at present. I think I'm the oldest person in this part of the world. Um, I was brought up on a farm at, at Dangin. If you don't know where Dangin is, it's just south, uh, west of Quirrading. I was brought up on a farm there um, and I had my primary education at the Dangin School uh, and uh, <coughs> Uh, I had my secondary education at Wesley College in South Perth where I spent four years there and possibly one of the small items in my career at Wesley College that uh, in my final year in 1940 I was the Open Champion Athlete, athlete of, of Wesley College. Um, <coughs> Nin end of 1940, I, I commenced work at the Commonwealth Bank. I didn't think I was ever quite suited for a farming life. <laughs> and I, in, in 1942, I joined the Australian Army as the Second World War was then in full force. <coughs> After the end of the the Second World War, I resumed work at the Commonwealth Bank and moved all around Australia in various places. And in 1949, they decided to transfer me to the Eastern States and I went, went to Melbourne, where I was based in Melbourne for four years, no, six years mm. in Melbourne. And uh, I managed to, uh, they realised, as a West Australian, I wanted to come back to WA, where my family was based. So I managed to get a transfer to Meriden in 1955. Arriving in Meriden, I boarded at the local hall, the old Meriden Hotel, which is no longer there. It was there, it was a great big hotel. It was quite handy because I the Commonwealth Bank, when I was still working, was only just across the road. <coughs> um, my early days in Meriden were just kept between work and um, I was very keen on sport, took part in uh, various sports, uh, tennis, golf, Many years in later life, I took up lawn bowls, which I continued playing lawn bowls in Meriden up, uh, until 19. Let's see where. Um, <coughs> at, up until I got too old and couldn't move too well, I had to give up lemon bowls. I was still playing lawn bowls up until about 10 years ago, I think. So I spent most of my time, in, in, if it wasn't in work, where, and, uh, and in 1959, they moved me to Collie Branch, where I, uh, I worked. And in, in 19, end of 1960, no, 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 1961, I married Margaret. Met Margaret, of course, in Mer in Meriden. She was only she was uh, working at her father's news agency shop. So, and uh, I was still keen on my sport in my spare time. And we then took over the. We were married in 1960, 1960 and uh, 1961. We took over the running of the then Davies News Agency in Bates Street, where we continued working there for more than 16 years, operating the news agency, uh, and 
probably more on the Margaret side of things. We had three, three daughters and now we've got grandchildren and great-grandchildren. Mm -hmm. my, my, my early days in Meriden, apart from work, was just pr playing sport and being involved in various organisations in, in Meriden. As a result of my involvement in the community of Meriden, and I was awarded the, what, the Medal of the Order of Australia, which is here. It's that medal there, actually. Oh. Margaret can tell you more about the earlier days in Meriden before I came to Meriden. Certainly, think things, whole life changed from the time I arrived in Meriden in 1955 up until present time. But I've always uh, kept fairly, fairly involved in the, in the local community affairs and community affairs. Um, <coughs> We sold the business in 1977, I think. Mm. Since, since then, I've just taken life easy, easy. <laughs> but I've still managed to keep occupied by various interests in sport and other local affairs. Um, just a general change in the whole setup in Meriden. With it has, life has changed. I can still remember in my earlier days in Meriden, I felt the town was more busy in some ways because it was a large railway community and all, all the shops were all fully occupied, which is not the case today, unfortunately. There's a shopping town, isn't there? There's, there's changed. In some ways, I suppose, it's been advanced in some ways, but back in those days, it, it, population of Meriden probably hasn't changed a lot over the years, but it's, the, the, the whole life has changed so, to an enormous amount since the time I came to Meriden up, up until now. Treasurer or secretary for six years of the, mm. the Agricultural Society, I just happened to be, happened to be uh, here and they needed someone to, do, to um, be involved in the, in my case it was the Mostly as, as, as the society's treasurer because my banking background, business background, and uh, apart from the uh, being involved in the agricultural society, which you're probably aware of, uh, I seem to get caught up in various organisations at various times. That uh, kept me occupied. Oh, school PNCs. We had three daughters, of course, and and uh, that PNC associations. Um, I was made a justice of the peace more than fifty years ago, which is probably more than anyone else. <laughs> uh, that was that kept me busy because in those days the magistrate only came once a fortnight, and we had to do a lot of court work as the Justice of the Peace. Um, so I kept myself occupied. I probably retired reasonably early, but I always had plenty of things to do. Mm. And so certainly Meriden has changed mm. a terrific amount. Uh, I suppose some things are really good. And in my opinion, many things, the old Meriden town was a happy, happy place to live in. <laughs> I suppose uh, meeting Margaret and getting married and having a family. Mm. We've got what we had three daughters. We've now got, I think, uh, about, about four great grandchildren. Grandchildren. The family life was always something to do in and around Meriden. Even even those days, even it's changed a lot, but it's, there's always plenty of activity in and around Meriden. I found probably my main thing was uh, sp every spare moment I had, I played sport. I was always, always like, I was either in tennis and golf and lawn bowls late in later, li later life. I always enjoyed sport and there was plenty of that available in Meriden and, as, and probably still is plenty of sport. But the, the population in and around Meriden seems very different. Uh, 
those days with all the smaller farms now, everything's changed so much over the years. I met her probably because they had the news agency shop just across the road. So, and also Margaret used to play tennis. We played tennis to get the tennis at the tennis club and, and probably a few, a few social, social occasions we just met Margaret and just went on from there. In a business, like any business, I suppose, it's just meeting people. We had the, we had the news agency business, what, for six, 16 years, and uh, that was a full-time job, with, with opening, like any shop, and meeting meeting so many people, customers. Apart from that, I met a lot of people in, being involved in various other activities over the year, years. Well, back in... When I came here in 1955, it was a, the town was very busy with these small business. Now, it's, a lot of those small business have, have sort of disappeared. We have, we've got big, bigger, bigger businesses, but fewer, fewer businesses. Uh, if you, I suppose that's. The, yeah, I don't think the population's changed a great deal over the years. It's just a, a different mixture, mm. particularly of course in the. When you're in business, you've met so many people, the farmers and the local community, uh, through through the business, and our various involvement in uh, different organisations. Luck, ninety percent luck. Uh, 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 I'm a twin. Unfortunately, my twin sister only and he passed away about a month ago. I th probably, to some extent, our, our Fairly clean living, I think. We didn't do any stupid things, and uh, I've had a lot of medical problems in, in years, different times. And uh, luckily, the, thanks to the medical profession, and and I think uh, keeping active uh, and, and a lot of luck that I managed to survive my various medical problems and uh, lived all this long. Uh, that's about my main, main thought. I think I'm very lucky to have lived this to so long. <laughs> my health is deteriorating now, but that's only natural when you get to, when you get to 99. <laughs> I suppose because you get involved in the community and you meet so many different people, and we were just fortunate we, we met so many so many different people and being and. Uh, in living in the local, local, local activities and, and there's always something to do here and I think we, I think it's, we enjoyed, enjoyed the general, general uh, life that's available in Meriden both back in those early days and even though it's changed a lot it's still, it's, I think it's a good town to live in oh. just the way there the advancement of, of general life in Meriden, I, it's very, it's like, like everywhere, it, it, the activities of people now are, are changed quite a lot uh, since those earlier days. Uh, I think one of the things is, that even, even though I was enjoying and was active in sport, the whole sporting community has changed so much with so many clubs like particularly football and all those. Uh, when a, a number of clubs now that are lucky to find a single club still operating there. Mm. And organisations stuck much the same. Of, uh, people don't get involved as much in the, well, as, as they used to, I think, back in those my early days. Mm. First World War, my father served in the Australian Army <coughs> in the First World War and served in France. And uh, in the 11th Battalion, he served in, in France. For, uh, and during, during the war in 1916, he, my father was, was wounded in action. And uh, he was, as this story here tells, I don't know if, you, uh, if you'd like to read it. Say I can read it for you. It says, or would you like to read it? Can you read uh, it? Uh, I can, if you yeah. like. Yeah. 
I have here, I'll show it in a moment, I did, in April, 15th of, uh, 15th of April, 1970, First World War in France, um, my father, who was Ernest Johnson, was, was wounded in action while serving in the 11th Battalion in the Australian Army. A bullet fizzed his third finger on his right hand. I can't hold my finger. The third finger his right hand. And the bullet continued on. The bullet continued on to this diary which he had in his left pocket, just the, over his left hand. Uh, and the bullet continued on, well, there's the hole where the bullet went. And it finished up in another book that he had in his left pocket. It hit something hard in this, per this wallet, which he had, and the, that stopped the bullet, which then must have dropped into his, into his pocket on his left, in front of his heart. So that these books saved his life. The only damage he had was a had one busted finger, which was never much good one one of the ass fingers. And uh, at the end of the First World War, he got the, the service medals, which are these two medals, which are his service medals. He returned from the war. And we worked on this farm for a while. In the war, I joined the army in. Uh, June 1942, mm -hmm. and uh, my army life was almost immediately posted to uh, <coughs> excuse me, posted to uh, New Guinea, which very, was very active, but the Japanese forces had had come right down through the islands in the Pacific to a came to New Guinea in June 1942, and they were held up in their advance. Uh, across New Guinea, up, in, up at a place called Kokoda, in the, in the mountains in the middle of New, of New Guinea. At that same time, the unit to which I had, was belonged was posted also to New Guinea, a different part of New Guinea, at a place called Milne Bay, which is on the eastern tip of New Guinea. At the same time that the battle was going on at Kokoda, we were, the Australian army managed to hold up the uh, Japanese advance, so the Japanese army decided to, to find somewhere else to try, try and make the advance across New Guinea and possibly uh, 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 land in Australia. At a, and at Milton Bay they were, they were stopped in the advance by an Australian force there. There was, a, there was an airstrip there, so they were very keen to get that air, obtain that airstrip and they were stopped their advance and um, at, at Milne Bay. I, I, I happened to be serving there at the time at Milne Bay and the Australian Army, supported by some American Army, managed to stop the advance of the Japanese <coughs> uh, advances in, in Milne Bay and they were, they were completely defeated and a few survivors managed to get, get, get out of New Guinea and that was recognised it's the first land defeat of the Japanese forces in the Second World War. Mm. So I, I continued to serve in, in New Guinea for a total of three years in New Guinea, uh, various parts of New Guinea moving around. And finally, uh, uh, after a period of leave, after a couple of years, had fortunately I finished up a total of three years in New Guinea serving the Australian Army and uh, uh, till the end of the war and uh, I was sorely serving up in, in near uh, near Rabaul when, uh, when the war in the Pacific was concluded so I was able to um, <coughs> come back return to Australia and get discharged and I went back to work work in the uh, Commonwealth Bank until well, until I resigned from the bank to take over the news agency, news agency in Meriden. The, these medals are just the general service medals 
The first medal is the Order of Australia medal, which I was awarded. The others are service medals for my service in the Second World War, which basically just just awarded for my community service in Meriden over a period of years. And obviously someone thought I was worth an award and nominated me for the Order of Australia Award, which was awarded in, I think, 2008 for my general community service in Meriden over a long period. Um, indirectly, at one stage, just before I received that award, I made a list out of the organisations that I was involved in, in and usually as treasurer or, or secretary or auditor. I made a list. I, was, I had more than 50 organisations mm. that I had, had some position, position in at one stage. Mm. Just the life in the, in the army and in a, in a, in a war zone was... Life it wasn't as bad as some thought because I was not never in a in a unit actually in the front line. I was in the administration unit of a signals unit, so we we lived reasonably well. Uh, the life, the climate in New Guinea where we were spent most of our time was very a uh, lot, lot of wet weather and. We, and uh, one thing I mentioned about about in New Guinea, particularly in Milton Bay, was that there's always mud, always raining, and there's always malaria giving you a lot of a lot of a lot of people suffering from malaria. I was one of the very lucky few that didn't con have, have uh, contact, didn't to finish up with malaria. So that was one of my lucky things. A lot of the members of our unit at one stage. Our particular unit was down to less than half, not from enemy action, but from malaria mm. and tropical diseases up in, in New Guinea back in those days mm. during the Second World War. Just to survive so long. I think I'm pretty sure I'm the only survivor of our unit, was, which when it left Western Australia back in 1942 was about 250 strong, a signals unit. I'm fa fairly sure I'm the only survivor, mm. so I'm I'm lucky. That's where I'm I'm lucky, and I've managed to to live so long. Probably keeping active and keeping moving, and probably taking reasonable care of my uh, health as much as possible, and to help with the medical profession like many Australians serving in the First World War in France and he was in, in a battalion which is in the front line they were fighting against the Germans in those days and as I, I think I've already mentioned he, he was wounded in action and with a German bullet he was, he was he talked about I was lucky he was even luckier than me because this saved his life Otherwise, I'm sure the bullet with which he was wounded would, would, have, would have probably pierced his heart or in that area and he would never return, never survived. So at the end of the war, um, eventually returned to Australia and returned to civilian, civilian life. So he had a lucky, lucky life and I probably had a lucky life in a different way.